Hi there, Eduardo. So we've got another set of essays from you. Uh, before we get into it, I want to address your question about word count. Um, there is um, a common misconception around IELTS that because it's part of, um, it's owned in part by Cambridge, that the rules that apply to Cambridge English apply to IELTS as well. And one of those rules um, is regarding word length. Now, um, it is commonly believed that you have to write 250 words minimum for IELTS. Um, and some people say that, like Cambridge English, uh, the examiner will grade no more than 10% above that word count. Uh, that is incorrect. There is no word um, maximum, okay? So you can write something that even takes um, a third page, okay? So you can write the entire answer sheet when it's given to you and also ask for another paper and you'll be fine. So the examiner will grade absolutely every single thing that you write on that paper, okay? So with that said, write uh, essays that express your um, ideas and show your language capabilities as best as possible and don't worry about keeping your word length down, okay? What you do have to worry about, however, is um, time, of course, okay? You have to make sure that whatever you write stays within the 40 minutes, okay? All right, so now that we've covered that, let's um, get into your essays. Uh, domestic and international travel, benefits, drawbacks, discuss them both. Okay, experts around the globe are debating whether the increase in business and leisure travelers can be considered sustainable. Although nowadays, thanks to affordable flights and increase in security, more and more people are gaining motivation to travel, uh, there are there still are many downsides associated uh, with this issue. This essay will argue the pros and cons, providing examples from Harvard University research and travel experiences. Okay, so far so good. There is ample evidence supporting the fact that leaving... Uh, okay, let's fix that. There is ample evidence supporting the fact that leaving your home city temporarily brings a broad range of positive effects, not symptoms, okay? A symptom is something different. The reason behind this is mainly twofold. Firstly, the preparatory activities such as choosing where to go or booking a flight help focus and gather information, help focus, okay? And gather motivation on what is seen as a pleasant activity coming, which provides an objective that fulfills your necessities. Okay, it got a little awkward here. Um... So, you're saying basically that the preparatory activities, in other words, the research into the flight, where to go, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is a pleasant activity. And then the rest of this lost me. So, I would have asked you to, um, to uh, just simplify this, make it clearer, all right? Uh, because you, uh, in attempting to make this rather complex, you lost meaning. Okay, so moving on. Uh, secondly, the actual trip itself provides the opportunity to disconnect from our daily routines and problems, providing the mind with a distraction that avoids illnesses such as distraction, depression, or anxiety. Uh, let's try that again. Secondly, the actual trip itself provides the opportunity to disconnect from our daily routines and problems. Full stop. This provides the mind with a distraction, which could potentially avoid, mm, yeah, which could potentially avoid illnesses, such, well, not really avoid, prevent illnesses such as depression or anxiety. For example, um, a Harvard University study shows that people that travel once a year are less likely to feel depressed than those that do not. Therefore, traveling could be seen as a therapeutic treatment for those susceptible to health issues related to the state of mind. Okay, so do you see what I did? I found that the there was just too much happening in that sentence, and so I broke it into two, and I just changed a couple of words to make it flow better. All right. Um, so, okay, everything that you talked about in terms of the positives of traveling have to do basically with our our mood, our psychology. So 
In other words, booking the trip makes us feel excited, gives us motivation, and secondly, it helps us avoid things like depression and anxiety. Okay, fine. Let's look at your uh, second paragraph. On the other hand, moving across the country between nations does not come without negatives. This is mainly because the sharp increase in number of travelers has not allowed sufficient time for the key infrastructure to be adjusted accordingly. For instance, it is common to see ourselves stuck in traffic jams, long airport queues, tra flight delays, and such. Furthermore, the receptor areas, I don't know about that word, receptor areas, have not seen appropriately develop, mm, have not been appropriately developed to host a vast number of vehicle, uh, visitors, and quite often these find themselves without accommodation or struggling to find a restaurant where to eat. Who is these? The visitors. All right, it wasn't clearer because when you said these, I immediately thought you meant the receptor areas, which I also told you I didn't really care for as an expression. It doesn't, it doesn't translate well into English at least. Um, let's see, to host a vast number of visitors and quite often, um, you could have said these visitors and that would have been okay. Um, and then that's fine. So then what you need here is something you had here but you didn't include in this paragraph, which is something of a conclusive statement, a sentence to kind of round off the paragraph, okay? So from the arguments and examples given, it is clearly observed that even though traveling provides opportunities to balance out the stress of the modern life with an F, it does not come without drawbacks, S, that should be taken into consideration. Nevertheless, it is predicted that... Uh, as infrastructure develops, the traveling experience will become more and more pleasant. Okay, that's good. Um, it's fine. I liked it. Um, I told you there were a couple of things that I would have liked you to have uh, changed. Um, but other than that, it's a well-written essay, cohesive, makes sense, no problems. Okay, let's take a look at this here. This is the movie preferences. Fabulous. Oh, and look at that. There it is. Excellent. Okay, so the bar chart above shows movie predilections for women and men divided in six key groups action comedy drama horror and romantic it can be seen that females have a tendency for romantic and comedy movies with 116 and 137 respectively on the contrary animation with 54 and horror with 64 are the less preferred action and drama have a similar popularity of around 85 okay among males tastes separate separate significantly well i wouldn't say separate they differ tastes differ significantly in some cases whilst comedy and horror remain within the same range as for women 100 <coughs> excuse me 145 against 137 in comedy what oh okay all right i understand and 73 against 64 in horror romantic and action shifted apart okay there's a lot going on in that sentence. So again, it's the kind of thing where um, if you had phrased it differently or if you had shortened it into a couple of different sentences, it would be easier to read. I know a lot of times um, students think, oh, well, you know, I have to write complex sentences, so I got to do it somewhere somehow. Um, yeah, that's true. You have to write some complex sentences, but um, a lot of times you have to remember that simplicity and clarity are uh, far more important, okay? Because you, the important thing is that your message gets across and not so much that you show, oh, I can write a difficult sentence. If it's a sentence that has to be read two or three times, then uh, it's far worse than a simple sentence that you know is accurate, okay? I prefer simple and accurate over complex and confusing. So let's look at this again, all right? Whilst comedy and horror remain within the same range as for women. Okay, uh, what you could have said here is whilst comedy and horror uh, show similar figures as for women. Okay, you didn't have, I don't know if you necessarily had to have to write these. Uh, okay, so let's try it again. Whilst comedy and horror uh, showed similar figures as for women, uh, romantic and action um, figures were considerably different or differed considerably. I like that even better, actually. The graph clearly shows S that men generally dislike romantic movies with only 31 showing interest and, and love action. Okay, how about prefer? 
and prefer action as much as comedy uh, where numbers s are similar animation and drama are balanced i don't know about that uh you could have just said that animation and drama each uh had or were preferred were each preferred by 63 men Okay, I'm not talking about this balance in the middle. Just simplify it, okay? So, overall, although differences between males and females are not significant across most of the movie genres, it is worth mentioning how much the likes drift apart when talking about action and romantic movies. Uh, action and romantic. Okay, that's a good point. All right, I like this. This is good, Eduardo. All right, nice job. There are some areas of awkwardness. Um, you could see that there were some places that I really had to think about, and I kind of struggled um, to um, kind of keep the idea that you were trying to present, but to phrase it a little more appropriately. Uh, so that's one of the things I want you to work on, okay? Um, I liked your organization. I liked some of the comparisons you made you made um so it was a good job overall okay nice work correct them return them back to us corrected error correction list and of course your next set okay i'll be looking forward to seeing what you write next